Hello everyone, my name is Joshua Karasak. I'm a winemaking specialist with Anartis USA. In this presentation, we're going to talk about some methods that we can use uh, as winemakers to remediate smoke taint in uh, red wines. So here's an overview of some of the treatments for smoke affected red wines. Sorting out all of the leaves and material other than grapes. Uh, so because the leaves can absorb a lot of smoke uh, and because the other materials in the vineyard can also have smoke on the outside that can contribute quite a lot of smoke impact to your fermentation. So you want to be careful to sort out as much of that material other than grape, uh, especially the leaves as possible before fermentation. Don't try to avoid extraction with red, uh, red wines. Uh, this has been a strategy that has been tried by many winemakers over the last five years um, by trying to either decrease the temperature of the uh, fermentation or trying to press off early and it always ends up uh, failing. This is because a majority of the smoke compounds, uh, the glycosylated fraction, come out very quickly uh, uh, prior to fermentation and even in the onset of fermentation. So trying to avoid them uh, is, is not feasible for red wine making. Um, so in order to make a better wine, we recommend to make something that's a little bit more full bodied instead. Uh, make a wine that is going to be more substantial so that after fermentation, um, if you have to do treatments as far as activated carbon treatments or if you need to remediate the wine with reverse osmosis, you're starting with a wine that has a little bit more body to it so that after that treatment you have something that's a little bit more substantial. And then you can utilize high red fruit producing yeast strains. This is something that's been very useful for winemakers to do is to try and enhance red fruit aromas as much as possible uh, and flavors. And you can do this with a selection of uh, different fermentation uh, aids as well. Utilize fermentation tannins and polysaccharides. Uh, this is something that's going to help build up the wine, going to help uh, contribute to some of the aromatic precursors, and in general is going to help um, get your wine to a place that's going to be um, better from an aromatic and from a body standpoint so that after fermentation you, you just have a more substantial product. And then address the smoke post-fermentation with Clairol SMK. I'll talk about our uh, new finding product, the Clairol SMK, for treating uh, smoke-affected red fruit. Finally, avoid using heavy toasted oak in the, in the maturation period. So some of our fermentation range for boosting red fruit, we recommend trying the Anardis red, um, red fruit or firm red fruit or uh, the Q5. Both of those yeast strains produce a very high quantity of this red fruit com uh, component. Uh, which has been shown to mask smoke perception uh, and several different trials that we've done uh, this has been the uh, the best yeast or the, these two have been the best yeast strains as far as masking some of the uh, some of the smoke component with red fruit character our anartis tan rf uh, used to stand for red fruit and that is a um, a tannin that's going to contribute some precursors that these yeast can use um, to contribute and even further increase the red fruit character of your wine. So this is going to help build up the body a little bit. It's also going to help boost some of the red fruit character that's going to help mask the smoke. And there are an artist Protento. This is a, uh, a tannin and yeast polysaccharide blend. This is going to help uh, stabilize color, uh, build mid palate, um, all of the things that you basically want to do in terms of building up the wine so that if you do have to do some remediation post fermentation, you have a, a lot more to, to work with. Activated carbons have been shown to uh, reduce the, the smoke um, contribution from smoke affected wines. Um, so this is something that can be a useful tool for winemakers uh, to remediate some of the smoke. So now I just want to talk a little bit about Anartis' options for, um, for smoke remediation, our activated carbons and our range. So uh, over the last five years, we've been using an activated carbon called phenyl free. Uh, this Carbon was initially developed for the use of um, removing Britannomyces or volatile um, phenols uh, from Britannomyces taint. But we've also found that it works very well for removing uh, smoke uh, impact as well. So it's been used in white juices, white wines, red wines, uh, very successfully for remediating smoke. Uh, it is a deodorizing activated carbon, which means it's more gentle on color. However, it does still remove uh, a significant amount of color from uh, red wines when used in higher dosages that are required for smoke remediation. So uh, an artist set out to develop a new product specifically for remediating smoke impacted wines. Um, we had some information from work that was done at the AWRI that there were some activated carbons that could potentially be even better for removing um, not only the volatile fraction of smoke but also uh, glycosidic uh, bound fraction of smoke. 
um, from uh, red wines. So uh, we developed the Clairol SMK, which has a new deodorizing activated carbon, which uh, works very well for removing volatile and glycosylated um, smoke tank compounds, as well as being extremely gentle on phenolics and color. Uh, so this en enables it to be used at higher dosages in uh, red wines uh, without affecting negatively um, or too negatively the, the phenolics. Uh, we've also included pre-activated chitazan and pea protein in the blend with this uh, activated carbon, and those components uh, aid in the settling of the activated carbon out of the wine. So uh, those act to help uh, facilitate the settling of the carbon from out of the wine. Additionally, those components help with uh, improving the mouthfeel and the bitter finish that comes with uh, smoke-affected uh, red wines. So we're really excited about the Clairol SMK and, um, and its use in wine. Um, currently, it, it does contain uh, pea protein, which means that it um, is still under experimental use only um, from the TTB. So uh, we do have a letter that can be drafted to request use of the Clairol SMK for the 2021 vintage. Um, so if winemakers are interested in using this tool, we highly recommend submitting a letter to the TTB. Uh, we have a template format that can help uh, facilitate this process for you. If you just reach out to us, we're happy to uh, pass that along to you so you can um, so you can request its use and hopefully have access to being able to use it this vintage if needed. Uh, so uh, that's the two activated carbons that we have uh, currently in our range. So here we just wanted to uh, look at some data uh, comparing the treatment uh, efficacy of the Clairol SMK versus the phenyl free. So when we were looking for the activated carbon for, for treating red wines, we wanted something that was going to be gentle on phenolics on color and also uh, still be efficient at removing smoke taint um, glycosides and volatiles. And we can see that when we compare the Clairol SMK to the phenyl free as far as um, even with 100 grams per hectoliter dosage, uh, when we compare to the control, the Clairol SMK um, has much more color. Uh, when we look at the color thumbnail generated from the CIE lab results, uh, we can see the phenyl free while still being uh, an efficient remover of um, smoke taint does impact the color uh, significantly more than the Clairol SMK. So the Clairol SMK is, is um, still removing the smoke, but not being as impactful on the color. When we also look at the phenolics, we can see a similar trend that the Clairol SMK removes about half as much of the phenolics uh, compared to the phenyl free. And then when we look at the efficiency at removing smoke glycosides, uh, we can see that the phenyl free is a little bit more efficient, but not quite, um, not a huge difference uh, compared to the Clairol SMK. And then when we look at the smoke volatiles, um, the free fraction, we can see that uh, both the Clairol SMK and phenyl free um, decrease the amount of free volatiles uh, significantly. Uh, so this is just highlighting the, um, the impact of the SMK as far as smoke taint removal uh, and also its uh, gentle sort of impact on phenolics and color. So after fermentation, uh, we may have a wine that still has some uh, residual smoke that we want to do some fining to remove um, using the Clairol SMK or using phenyl free. After we've done that treatment, we may want to build the wine back up a little bit more. Um, and so we have some post fining um, recommendations as far as um, tannins and polysaccharides that can help build the wine back up. Uh, red fruit enhancing tannins such as the Unico number no. two or the Tan RF can really help with uh, building back up that red fruit component and also some of the body of the, of the wine. Surly one is really useful, um, both for aging and, and prior to bottling to help fill the mid palate and help um, build up the wine again. Citra gum or Citra gum plus is a rabbit gum that's used for tartrate stabilization, but it does have some benefit as far as its impact on bitterness and the af ashy aftertaste that comes with uh, smoke effect on, in red wines. So these are all things that can be used by winemakers to build the wine back up after they have to do some, uh, some fining remediation. So thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you want to learn more about how to handle uh, smoke affected fruit, you can download our protocols for whites and reds um, found in the details of this video. You can also check out our other video we have on uh, handling uh, white grapes uh, that have been smoke affected. Uh, so you can uh, check out those, um, those links and the details of this video. You can also look at our website. We've got more information, newsletters uh, there or feel free to call our technical line uh, and talk about smoke taint with one of our um, technical winemakers. Thanks so much for watching and we hope that you have a great Harvest 2021.